the Chieftain has endorsed Dennis Flores, and the Chieftain has endorsed Mark Aleph and Tommy Farrell and Ed Brown. So me and the Chieftain disagree with Ed Brown. Me and the Chieftain, I think, kind of disagree. It, it, I'm questioning myself now. Because the Chieftain is a Republican rag. They're pro-capitalist, pro-monopoly, pro... They don't care for free enterprise. They don't care for competition. They don't actually want to inform the voters of everything they need to know. In fact, their explanations was only like one or two sentences. Here, I'm agonizing. I look at platforms that compare and contrast. Who will I get? Which one closely aligns with me the most? So this just makes me like Michael Stapleton that much more. Because if a Republican rag are liking some of the people that I was kind of liking, then I think there's a problem. I think there's a problem. So here's what Michael Stapleton. With Michael Stapleton, I'm just, you know, uh, not happy that he's not going to bring us some Wi-Fi. I'm not happy that he's not going to invest in solar trees. Now, I think that a Michael Stapleton, we need at least one conservative on the board, at least one Michael Stapleton. So either Mark Aliff or Michael Stapleton, uh, just, you know, uh, I'm tired of these fucking Democrats being fake fucking Republicans. I don't want Republicans. I can't stand Republicans. Michael Stapleton's a libertarian, so he is moral. He is authentic. He is principally. His moral constitution says, fuck the war on drugs. We deserve a right to our own bodies. We deserve a right to our own bodies. He believes in personal freedom. Oh my God, can you believe that? An American who believes in personal freedom. I haven't heard anybody else speak about personal freedom, and the war on drugs is the reason why we have so many goddamn fucking issues on the street, so many issues in the goddamn jail. The war on drugs has failed everywhere. The ultra essentially distill it down to very, you know, two very simplistic things that both of those candidates, they're both good candidates, so I would say that they've tipped the scales in terms of goodness, uh, but they're not great, okay? So to make Tommy... Farrell, great, what he needs to do is to stand up to the war on drugs. It's bullshit. You know, you're acting like what? Because uh, Mr. Miss Sally May, so old, old Grandma Sally, she likes to do some heroin in the privacy of her own home, and you got a problem with that? Why the fuck you got a problem with that? It's her own body. That's the way she wants to live her life. Well, actually, she's probably sad and depressed. Why don't you go talk to her and then see what her issues are and then solve them because you're a councilman, right? So you're going to solve people's problems. Or are you just going to get the power and then just, you know, I'm smarter than everybody. I went to college and I'm educated, so just everybody worship me. Tommy Farrell needs to be against the war on drugs. Tommy Farrell also needs to be for trash incineration or for waste to... Sierra Club went ahead and endorsed Ed Brown. So when what that tells me is that the Sierra Club did not look at the platforms. They did not compare and contrast platforms. What the Chieftain did, what the... Uh, what the Sierra Club did, they're, they're, it's political. It's more about political than about policy. Uh, after meeting Dennis Mays, I basically walked away like, okay, he's an asshole. But uh, that wasn't enough of a disqualifier. I need to know, was he an asshole for good? Was he an asshole for progressives? Or was he an asshole just to be an asshole? And so essentially, it's okay if you're an asshole. If you're an asshole to fight for justice, to fight for freedom, to fight for, you know, to fight against the war on drugs. And waste to energy programs. Go check out Portland. They got a plasma gasification plant. So plasma gasification. We could turn our shit and turn it into electricity. It stinks, and there's going to be, you know, so we have to put it out in the, uh, probably put it on top of the landfill. Put it on top of the landfill. The Sierra Club principle. The Sierra Club principle is more landfills, more methane. Let's just keep dumping shit in the landfills. Let's just keep on. Uh, put, pumping all that methane out into the atmosphere. Keep on adding to the global warming. That's what the Sierra Club believes. The Sierra Club says, let's take our trash and bury it into the ground and so it can uh, go ahead and create all that methane. The Sierra Club principle is lots more methane, lots more landfills, nonstop. They did not compare and contrast Ed Brown's platform to Joshua Bruns. If they would have compared the platforms, it's clear that one is way better, way superior than the other. The reason why they chose Ed Brown because he's a conservative. He already has power, and they're friends with him. So they're hedging their bets. They didn't go for the progressive who actually would be better for the environment. Sierra Club don't give a shit about the environment. They care about their friends. They care about politics. They care about power. They care about money. They don't give a goddamn about the environment. Tommy Farrell, you need to start thinking of some waste to electricity energies, and you need to start speaking about them out loud, or I just, you know, what the fuck? What the fuck?
You're going to go along with this bullshit methane all over the place. You're just, why don't you just take the fucking landfills and just put them on top of people's houses? Fuck it. Let's just live in our own goddamn filth. We're just going to be complacent, right? We're a pig sleeping in our own shit. That's what landfills are. That's what methane is. Trash incineration gets rid of 87% of the problem. 87% of the problem. 87%. Gone. What are we going to do with it? Oh, we're not going to store it underground so it can decompose and then get bacteria and produce all this, you know, crazy shit. So Tommy Farrell needs to give a shit about personal freedom. He needs to give a shit about, he needs to be an American, okay? These people have a right to their own bodies. The problem isn't the damn drugs, it's the society. But if you're rich and wealthy, I thought that maybe Tommy Farrell would actually give a damn about the poor more than... Uh, Michael Stapleton, but I'm not for sure about that. Michael Stapleton seems to think that he cares about the poor, that he would help and try to get a homeless shelter. And now that the chieftain has endorsed Tommy Farrell, well, hell, the Republicans love you. The Republicans love you. Oh, there's another reason how Pueblo is conservative. The fucking chieftain. The damn chieftain is, the editorial board is a Republican editorial board. And before it was the Republicans in 1911, if the chieftain knows their history, which they don't. But in 1911, it was the Republican progressives that got us a charter convention. They were the first ones to get us a charter. If it wasn't for the Republican progressives, we wouldn't have got a charter. This is 1911. What This is Woodrow, Teddy, and whoever was between them two. But these are the Republican progressives. They're not progressive anymore. The chieftain is a regressive rag. Farrell needs to give a shit about waste to energy treatment, and he needs to be opposed to the war on drugs, okay? So when I first talked to him, he kind of he was like, you know, making fun of the idea, sort of like, well, I mean, it has, I mean, it has failed. It hasn't worked. But then I read in the newspaper that he said, well, the voters already voted for it. Well, you're really hedging your bets there. It's almost like you're talking, you know, to, um, out of both ends of your mouth. Are you in favor of the war on drugs? He's never said that he opposes it. So my guess is that he's not principled about American freedoms. He's not principled when it comes to my right to, you know, uh, sell my own body if I want to sell it for sex. So prostitution, war on drugs, gay marriage, that's also personal freedom. Can you relate? Can you relate that, you know, personal freedom is very important? But we're going to arrest people for personal freedom. They're homeless. They're depressed. They're sad. Dog eat dog fucking world. There's some other shit going on there. And it hasn't worked. We haven't got rid of the drugs. It's real fast about Michael Stapleton, but essentially real simple. Waste to energy. Tommy Farrell, you got to get on fucking board or whatever, you know, like I'll just assume you're a Republican. So the Sierra Club and the Tommy Farrell principle is to get more landfills and to get more methane. They want to keep the status quo going. They want nothing to change. They have no interest in turning trash into electricity or turning shit into electricity. They don't care about plasma, gasification. They don't give a damn about any of these processes. On, and then there's ways to, uh, you know, whatever. So the, uh, Tommy Farrell needs to be in favor of waste to energy technologies. Just a good fucking idea. You can't recognize a good idea when it smacks you in the face. Tommy Farrell is also for a strong mayor. So Tommy Farrell hasn't read the charter. He hasn't read the 10-page document. He doesn't have any, he's not an independent thinker. It's like all these candidates rushed in to conform and to have a consensus. It was like, it looks like everybody else believes it. So I what Michael Stapleton needs is we need some Wi-Fi and we need some uh, Wi-Fi and some solar trees. Solar trees, it increases the walkability. You want to decrease crime, then make our fucking communities cool. Make it cool. We have localized economies. We have places where we can spend our money here. People want to walk and be about out and about. Right now, it's a fucking dog culture. It's a vicious dog culture. That's what we got right now. A vicious dog culture. Everybody stays in their house, scared out of their fucking minds, alienate the shit out of themselves with dogs barking at every passerby so they get that negative energy out there. The assholes are probably creating the fucking criminals. People are, you know, alienated. And what do you think a barking dog is going to do? Is it going to... Increase walkability? Is that going to increase community and connections in the local community? So Wi-Fi is, you know, the poor people, the Internet divide. Anytime municipal government gets into a business, it's just a bunch of greedy fucks. Hey, let's just give all the greedy fucking rich people free reign and dominion to do as the fuck as they please. Who gives a shit? How many people they hurt? Who cares? That's the system we got now. Let's let rich people do as the fuck as they please. That's not a good system. Then Minneapolis, they got municipal Wi-Fi, and it was $10 a month. I'm paying $50 to $60 now. It saves us 50 bucks. 
Do you want to save the people? And this isn't just, I mean, it helps the poor because there's a digital gap, but it helps everybody. It helps everybody. So why would he be against municipal Wi-Fi? Because he's against it in principle of having any kind of government spending. But Michael Stapleton, if you get on board with Wi-Fi, I would trust Michael Stapleton to make that as conservative as, as possible. So we got, you know, let's get municipal Wi-Fi. Michael Stapleton will make sure that there will be other competitors in the market and that we only have a hand in it and not that we're not regulating it. We just own one business. And that's how we're regulated by... While this article talks about New Orleans, Detroit, and Baltimore, it easily fits the scenario of Pueblo. This is Michael Stapleton. He just wrote this. With municipal, the municipal election just a week from today, Pueblo voters have a chance to reject the status quo, reject the Pueblo political machine, and reject more taxes and turn back from becoming more like these metropolitan areas in shambles. Voting for me, Michael Stapleton, for Pueblo City Council District 1, is one small step in the right direction. The outsider in the race, the candidate that knows more, uh, that knows the more taxes and fees is not the solution. And fees is a tax. He's absolutely right. How is a fee not a tax? Taking more from its citizens and business overall diminishes prosperity for the community. Taking more and throwing more of what is yours at the problem is not a solution. The solution is simple. Scrap the high tax regime and regulated labor markets. We should not let big government leave these third world cities in the I really like Michael Stapleton. Like I said, I think that, you know, they're both good. They're not great. But I really like Michael Stapleton because he's defined. He's well defined. I know exactly what I get with the Michael Stapleton. The rest are politicians. They're acting like politicians. They speak out both ends of their mouth. They just want everybody to love them. When, you know, I, I, he's got a platform. He's got ideas. He's got consistent ideas. So I know exactly what I am get when I get a Michael Stapleton. He will definitely be against the war on drugs. He said that he would go for a homeless shelter. So I believe that he'll probably get private people, and that'll never work. But um, he said that he's for the busing, that he's for the zoo. He's for keeping the social uh, spending that we have there. He's also principally against corporatism. Hey, liberals, can you understand that, being against corporatism? When the fucking libertarians are standing up principles on principles, being against the war on drugs, it's hard for me to like you Democrats. You're not progressives. You're Democrats. And that's Democrats, and that's why the Republican chieftain loves you. You're not a progressive. You're a fucking Republican. And you know what? Why, why be a Democrat? Why be a Democrat? Just fucking switch your party over. If you're going to be so right-wing conservative... I like Michael Stapleton. He's a principal libertarian, so he's against taxes. His economics I don't agree with in general. But if we could get a Michael Stapleton to say, let's look into a municipal Internet, and we install a municipal Internet, Michael Stapleton would make sure that municipal Internet company is not uh, the government. It doesn't monopolize. It doesn't take over. it. They'll have just their one company, their one thing, and then we don't help them. We don't help them. The magical free market means we don't you know, pick one over the other. So once the municipal electric company is set up, then we step back and we just let them run it. And it should be worker-controlled, worker-owned, and it should be democracy. So we should vote for the director of the municipal Wi-Fi. So I remember being in Louisville, Kentucky, and there was this, this mean old fucking woman. They were just so shitty. Next-door neighbor, they would sit their dog, and they would, it almost like they were like, hey, why don't you just bark at him? No, just keep barking at him. And I couldn't clean my backyard. I couldn't. Every time I walked in, every time I walked out, I was basically being, I was under attack. I was being terrorized. And it was a house full of black women, women. And it was, the matriarch was the shittiest one. She couldn't smile worth a fuck. She wouldn't smile worth a goddamn. And so because the matriarch is an oppressive piece of shit, I mean, maybe, you know, I don't know where the man is, so she can't be her feminine, lovely woman self, so she's got to be the boss. But by having 100% of the power, that makes all her kids into savages. And she only feels comfortable when she has all the power, which means they have zero power. So fuck those asshole oppressors. Fuck those asshole oppressors. They're killing their own goddamn... One's hands of the conflict between the powerful and the powerless means to side with the powerful, not to be neutral. The oppressed versus the oppressor. Which side are you on? Are you for liberation and freedom or are you for tyranny and oppression? That black matriarch woman, here's what eventually happened, right? So they're having their dogs. I'm trying to clean up my fucking yard, right? If I clean up my yard, it was a mess, and then it'd be less bugs, and it's good. What the fuck? I can't be in my own goddamn yard. I cannot clean my own fucking yard. Not to this black woman in Louisville. No fucking way. No way. 
So she had her dogs barking at me, and while I'm sitting there cleaning it, it's like, yeah, bah, 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 bah. and I'm like, yeah, fuck you, shut up, god damn it, shut the fuck up, you know, I should have put some fucking headphones in, but what the fuck? I got a, a dumb bitch, literally a stupid bitch, a dog is a female bitch, right, so her female dog is a bitch. So I gotta let, sit there and let a fucking bitch just fucking bark all that. I can't have my own thoughts. I can't think for myself. They had no respect for other people. They were go around hurting anybody. So the only thing that I can understand is that they just attack anybody that they can attack. They want power over anybody and everybody. And anybody that falls with, for their illusions, they'll get fucked over. But they're taking the fighting spirit that their own kids need in order to survive out in this world. They're taking it. They're robbing them of that. And that sucks, you know. There was three other black women that lived in there, and they had men coming all over the place. So essentially, they, they provoked a fight, they provoked an argument, and then because I, got, I dared argue with a woman, they got their gangster buddies and they robbed me. That's what happened. And Spalding University, the white women didn't give a shit. I had, there was nobody that gave a fuck. The police didn't give a shit. In fact, the police said, maybe you should leave. You know, you are a white person in a black neighborhood. Maybe you should just go. Yeah, man, my privilege is just so fucking wonderful. God, you know, fuck you all, man. This privilege is just just a nice c who do not act dialogically. Leaders who do not act dialogically but insist on imposing their decisions do not organize the people. They manipulate them. They do not liberate, nor are they liberated. They oppress. It's another Paulo Freire, the pedagogy of the oppressed. So the pedagogy of the oppressed, the oppressor doesn't love. The person that they oppress, they hate them. They hate them. Their love for them is a love of death because they have to oppress them. They got to rob them of their humanity. They got to rob them of their personality and their emotions and their history and everything that's about them. They got to take that away just so they can fasten you into a tool. Shut up, sit down, do your damn paper. Well, you know, I'm homeless. I don't give a shit. Sit there and do your fucking calculus. Do your damn you know, learn about the War of 1812, but I don't have any food, I'm cold, I'm, uh, you know, probably going to die at night. That happened in Louisville. There was a homeless kid that got killed. And the teachers, 90%, 80 to 90% are women. So they're, you know, it sucked for me living there, but now that I don't live there, now I'm kind of wondering, like, the, you know, the kids are fucked, right? So they're trying to make their shitty bitch crap mom happy when she don't love them. She don't give a goddamn about them. And could you imagine not having a mother who loves you? Your mother don't even love you. And so you grow up with the, all these insecurities, right? So I, the, all the uh, women that was under the matriarch that lived in that house, she didn't love them. She was the boss. Everybody had to go do what she said. So, you know, they, had, they were a tool. They were, just, they, were, they were robbed of their humanity. And what did they have left? Well, I guess they can act like a fucking psycho Nazi like their mother. So you have a bunch of women who's acting like psycho Nazis. They're not going to respect nice people. I'm supposed to respect a woman just because she exists, but she can't respect me because I exist. She'll respect the powerful. She'll respect the fascists, the cops, the rich. But she won't just like a person just to like a person. They never even thought, hey, this bit of kindness would have gone so far. So it has not been a cakewalk. And, in fact, because the liberals don't give a shit about white people and the conservatives do, you know, I mean, they're doing your argument for you, you stupid motherfuckers. You all want to sit there and what, act like I don't have a right to shelter, to eat, to have freedom, to have security, to have safety? You all kiss my ass. I'm so sick and tired of you motherfuckers. You all have done so much to me. It's not even funny. So that's uh, it just, I was just thinking about the whole, uh, you know, your own mother don't love you. Your own mother is a control freak. So, you know, whereas I had sort of a, my parents are too stereotypical, I think. But at least I had, you know, uh, that unconditional love. They don't have unconditional love. The teachers are teaching them to be authoritarian assholes, too. So who loves these kids? The women aren't. So who's loving them? I got one more radical uh, Paulo Freire quote here. The radical the person is, the more fully he or she enters into reality so that knowing it better, he or she can transform it. This individual is not afraid to confront, to listen, to see the world unveiled. This person is not afraid to meet the people or to enter into a dialogue with them. This person does not consider himself or herself the proprietor of history or of all people or the liberator of the oppressed, but he or she does commit himself or herself within history to fight at their side. Follow Freire. Let's read a couple more. If the structure does not permit dialogue, the structure must change. The structure must be changed if the structure does not permit dialogue. Looking at the past must only be a means of understanding more clearly what and who they are so that they can be 
Uh, they can more wisely build the future. That structure, so dialogue. There's no dialogue in city council. There's no dialogue in the American classroom. It's monologuist. Shut the fuck up. I would like to stop treating the east side like Puerto Rico.